All right, Brian Waters here with Leopard Claw, and I'm gonna to introduce today the Leopard Paw, and we've got two different variations of those. We've got the laser etched, which I actually like quite a bit, and then the CNC. Uh, the CNC one is just uh, got the imprint kind of etched into it, uh, so you can grip it a little bit better. Uh, I prefer this because it's a little bit more textured, so I think for clinicians this is really helpful, but then also for uh, just uh, normal folks that work out and things like that, it's nice. It's a little bit smaller than the claw, but the claw is still my go-to. It's more versatile. Um, but for everyday use for me, I see about 30 patients a day. This fits in my hand a little bit better, and I can get into what we're going to talk today about the hand and the wrist, uh, especially with patients. A lot of times I see wrist pain, uh, either in the top, the side, the bottom, hand pain, thumb pain, joint pain, especially with a lot of this lately with phones, um, also with typing. Tendinosis, tendinitis, all these different things. Uh, lately, we've been saying more tendinosis. So it's probably, it's probably a chronic condition that we're seeing here. Acute would be itis. We're seeing more chronic conditions. So we're gonna just call it osis today and encompass both of those. So I've got my field foam, shake this up, spray it on. We're gonna do the top of the wrist first. So uh, basically you have forearm muscle that's gonna cross the joint here and go into the hand and control extension and um, some of the movements of the fingers. Uh, on the side here, same thing, you have more of the muscle bellies here, the tendons cross the joint and then control the thumb and the fingers, and then here, same thing. Um, the tendons are going to be here at the wrist, but then the muscle bellies are up in the forearm, and then some of these smaller muscles are going to be down into the hands. So we're going to address all these today. So we'll put some of this on. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of scan the area we're going to detect kind of where we get that grisly stuff. So this is good for if I have pain in the top of the wrist. We see this a lot with uh, CrossFitters, uh, gymnasts, golfers. Sometimes they just call it gymnast wrist or uh, golfer's wrist. But yeah, for me, with what I do and typing too, I'm feeling it up here. So detecting up uh, in kind of the wrist extensors and the finger extensors up here in the muscle belly and you'll see this will also help uh, elbow stuff. So you're kind of getting a little double whammy here. And again, I like to have the beveled edge up. So it's that 45 degree bevel edge up. Really not too much of a difference between the two. You can uh, have a little less aggression here, a little bit more aggressive here, but I'll actually flip it around and kind of do it that way because I do like the beveled edge up. Personal preference. So now we're going to desensitize a little bit. So we'll speed up the repetitions here. Start to see it get a little red. And then, after we desensitize a little bit, we'll start to degristle. So detect, desensitize, and degristle. And that's where we start to really see the reaction. And this is where I'll add wrist extension and flexion with it. So I'll move up and down. I'll have the person open their hand, open their fingers, close their fingers, flex the wrist. And we'll go up and down and get a little myofascial release in here with the treatment. So now, you can see it's a little bit red there. We're going to leave that alone after about a minute or two. We'll stop. We get into the side of the wrist. So we see this one a lot with babysitters, people that lift weights, repetitive gripping with dumbbells. Um, stenosing tenosynovitis is my proper diagnosis for it, but um, dequerre veins, uh, wrist pain on the side, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Again, the muscle bellies are up in here, so make sure you start to detect. You're going to see, yeah, right in there is where I'm going to get this. And I'll have the person kind of move it as I'm detecting through this one. It's a little smaller muscle belly, so you're going to see a bigger change here quickly in the tissue. And then once you're up in the wrist, if you do do some of the tendons, be very gentle. It'll get red. Look how much redness we're getting there. Just doing a little gentle pass over the tendons. Don't put a lot of pressure here. And if it's on the bone, stay away from the bone. Get into the tendon a little, but just gently. And now with this one, you can see it's already red. That was about 30 seconds. Now we'll put a little bit more field foam on here. With this one, I always get into the meat of the thumb. This is where the leopard paw really comes in uh, handy. Really can get in there with the whole large uh, end of this. The paw end, I guess you could say. And again, you can have the person move their thumb, keep it open, get into the web a little bit there. You'll feel it's going to be pretty grisly into the meat of that and then into the hand a little. Some people have really sensitive hands. Uh, I'll just blanket kind of the tendons here um, into the middle of the hand. But really that thumb area 
And then down in here, which controls most of the pinky movement, we'll, we'll see a little bit of that, especially from holding an iPhone. If they prop weight on that, you'll start to feel there's some gristle in there, so we'll get in there. Now we're on to the anterior forearm. So up in here, again, this is where you'll see carpal tunnel type cases, things like that. Tendons, well, first thing you have to know is there are a lot more blood flow, a lot more venous structures here. Be a little gentler here. Anytime you're over the veins, the veins are a little bit more sensitive. Muscle bellies are gonna be up here. Let me get some more filled foam. So we'll start the detection up here. Here's the pronator, and we have the wrist and finger flexors are up in here. And this is really sensitive on me, so I do a lot of gripping. So we see this with weightlifters type, people of type. Obviously any carpal tunnel stuff, repetitive type issues, it's getting red, and I'm not even, I'm just using the weight of the tool, really. But this tool is so comfortable using the forearms. So I like to have one of each, and I carry these around with me too. Um, so again, have some movement through here. So on me, it's mostly the wrist and finger flexors, not necessarily the pronator. Pronator's up in here. They're really getting after it with my paw. And again, this is a laser etched one. I feel like the texture's a little bit better to hold. And for me, for repetitive use in my practice, it's a lot more convenient. And then again, just a little bit over the tendons. You don't want to do too much. Your hand will go numb. If it feels sketchy, it probably is sketchy. But uh, pretty much, and you can get in a little bit to the outside edge. This one's a little bit easier to do lying down on people, but to do self-treatment, just as easy. A lot of people can kind of make that muscle bulge by doing this. You can hear the gristle even. But again, going through the movement. And that'll get more of the um, inside edge, kind of the arm. So there it is. So we've got the top for top wrist pain. We've got the muscle bellies up here. For the side and the thumb pain, we've got the muscle bellies in here and the tendons here. And then don't forget that thumb and kind of the, the hand. And then for the uh, wrist on the inside, on the anterior wrist, you've got the muscle bellies up in here and you can really see I need that quite a bit. But again, go easier over the venous structures and over the bone, just be a little gentler. Uh, and you'll notice and, and look at the person if you're doing it someone else or look at yourself. And if you start to see a really big reaction, back off a little. So again, leopard claw, again, is my go-to. Uh, but these new leopard paws are, are awesome. So there you go.